Welcome to a quick tutorial on TechPlot 360 EX and I'm using 2014 R2. Uh, this tutorial is going to be in two parts. First is going to be loading and working Plot3D files. The second piece will be using uh, some of the new context toolbar options to control style for objects on screen as well as slice uh, ISO surfaces. So let's get started. If you go to the file load dialog, you, we've actually consolidated this so that any of our existing loaders are accessible as well as loading layouts. In this case, we are going to use Plot3D. If I want to get back to existing capabilities uh, in our legacy product, you can hit Advanced op Options and Open, and that will bring up the Plot3D file loader. In this case, however, we're just going to leverage uh, some of the improvements and I'm going to grab say oh maybe 20 or so solution files. I will also add the grid file and uh, then I'll open all of these. Now in the past I would have had to go specify uh, some additional options but in this case I don't need to do that you'll notice there's nothing on screen if I turn on a bounding box you can see that in fact what we've done is we've loaded in those volume cells uh, however those blocks we have not identified these surfaces of interest and as a result uh, we have uh, just a simple bounding box which helps show the extent of the domain to see what's going on within this solution we're going to turn on surfaces um, I don't need the bounding box I will open up the zone styles dialog and when it's under surfaces which is about the uh, ninth tab over surfaces to plot is currently set to none which is common any data that we bring in that's volume only we will set it to none you as a user will then uh, have the opportunity to say oh I want to look at the J planes once we do that you can see that in fact we have uh, a series of objects these particular surfaces uh, aren't necessary they're just part of a multi-block solution so we will hide them so I can just select and hit hide and uh, we should be able to get to just the cylinder so this is the cylinder this is a simple example let's flow over a cylinder we're looking at vortex shedding in general and uh, you can see that those surfaces now are available uh, here now a couple things to point out is uh, you can actually select by holding shift multiple zones and from there you can say oh I want to see the contour and so we can turn on say uh, density in this case so you can do this on a zone by zone basis or you can select all the zones and do that as well um, but in this case it's not overly important we'll just leave that alone for a moment if I right click on any zone surface you can see that I have access to most of the zone layers that typically you would access through the zone styles dialog so I can turn on a mesh I can color that mesh by uh, a variable if I chose to I can uh, use contour I can also turn contour off these are buttons I can look at shade so in this case uh, the shade is currently set to white but I could send it to say uh, a different color and then perhaps if I turn off the mesh you can see that the, the color is updated uh, if I wanted to make it translucent I can control the level of translucency again very quickly uh, from the toolbar so the in the intent was to make it so that you can set surfaces or set surface properties very quickly uh, without having to go to the zone styles dialog and effectively what this does as you can see here is it actually is turning on and off uh, the different attributes of the zone and you could do this uh, in a different way as well so if you wanted to go in and uh, add them individually one could do that as well uh, but that's really not what the purpose of this exercise uh, is necessarily so we can go back and hide this guy uh, the intent here is to just show you some of those capabilities okay alright so we have a contour on the cylinder and what I'd like to do at this point is look at the fluid domain by dropping in a slice. So we'll drop in a slice. Slice is going to show row. That's a, effectively the fourth variable. If we go over to contour details, you'll notice that 
our contour uh, group 1, which is what it's using, is in fact set to row. Uh, but I could actually look at the U component of velocity if I chose. And uh, we can also change the orientation of the slice. The slice is currently uh, in the X direction. If I want to look at a Y slice, I can type Y and it will move it into the Y axis or Z if I want to look at the Z axis. So you can use uh, just very quickly, you can use um, the right click uh, and some of the keyboard to set where the actual slice is going to be. So a Z slice is most appropriate for this example. Um, we are going to move that slice, say, uh, just to take a quick look at the domain. And since we're quite interested in vortex shedding in this context, we will calculate an additional variable, and that variable will be vorticity magnitude. Now, it's currently set up to calculate on demand. I'm going to remove that. These data are relatively small, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pay the tax, so to speak, by uh, looking at those uh, calculations more quickly. And so when I calculate here, it's actually going to calculate it for the complete domain. Again, with small data, this isn't much of an issue. If you have large data on, uh, let's say you're looking at 100 million cells, if you use Calculate On Demand, TechPlot will defer calculation of vorticity magnitude until um, such time that you've actually had an opportunity to use it. And so that just speeds up your analysis. Of course, um, if you're doing an animation, it would be a little slower as each individual time step as it marches forward would start that calculation for vorticity magnitude. So you can see it's about 57, 58 percent of the way done. Mind you, I think we're looking at maybe 30 or 40 time steps, so it's actually going through time now. Uh, again, if you want to defer that calculation, use Calculate On Demand. Okay, so as this finishes up, I'm going to show you a couple of things on how you can control contours and actually show those contours on screen. So as this finishes up, it should be, okay, looks like it's all done. Close this. Um, we can go over to our slice group here, and you can see we can control attributes on that slice group. And if you go to the contour variables, you'll notice that the contour variable hasn't been set up yet. So we'll go into contour variable 8, put it to vorticity magnitude. Uh, you can see that the levels that it chose are relatively high, because there's usually an area of relatively high vorticity. So I'm going to set these between 0 and 250. Um, and for simplicity, let's do 25 levels and OK. We'll then go in and set the slice to contour on vorticity magnitude. Um, also, for this context, I don't need the um, the legend, so I'll go ahead and hide both of these. Okay. Now I can't see uh, in this case. I can't see on the other side of the slice, so I may, in fact, want to turn on some translucency, just to get a better sense of where we are in space. I will then move the slice uh, down a bit to the the center of the domain, to about here, and if I hit play, you can actually go through and look at that animation, so we'll, we'll actually go through the different um, time steps. Um, another way that we might want to look at this is through an isosurface, and so through an isosurface, perhaps the easiest way to do that would be to uh, go ahead and turn on isosurfaces, which we'll do here. The isosurface uh, is set currently to row. We're going to set that to vorticity magnitude and set a value of, say, 150. It's a reasonable value. And uh, then we'll just redraw. OK, so there is my isosurface. And uh, for the slice, if I don't want to see that slice, I can just hide it. So now we just have the isosurface itself. And so if I do a quick animation, you can kind of see the, the vortex shedding off the cylinder. As with other attributes in TechPlot, a right click on the isosurface allows me to do things like turn on a mesh. I can turn off the contour, for example, maybe use shade, make it yellow, and uh, make it translucent. So all the things that you might want to control from an attribute of the derived object can be done 
directly uh, from the main interface. All of that same capability is available via the dialog as well, so you haven't lost anything. It's just perhaps a little easier to get to uh, the style of interest without having to go through the dialog. Um, again, you can animate through, and you can see uh, how those, or look at the uh, shape of the vortex structure coming off the, the cylinder. So hopefully that gave you a couple of ideas on how you might use TechBall 360EX to explore results from, in this case, Plot3D. One thing I didn't mention uh, that I will in a tutorial that will be around overset grid types is that we do have the blanking capability and so if this data set included an eye blank variable, which it does not, uh, we could take advantage of that eye blank variable to blank out um, parts of the mesh so that uh, when you're doing additional analysis you're not double counting. Uh, but in this case it's unnecessary. Thanks for watching and look forward to the next step in the process. We'll be going through working with large data uh, for a similar exercise and setting plot style.